Hello and welcome to tutorial on setting up Flash for making a pool table. Now this is an extensive project, will take a few days. So I'll go ahead and by start by doing a new document. In that do, do not new document, I want to make sure it's 800 by 400 at least. And I'll keep it at 12. I can even go slower. It might help to make it slower. Let me view it a uh, bit on the window for now. You guys don't have any reason to do that, but I do. Now, I like to have pool table colors, which would be kind of a dark green, maybe even slightly darker. There we go. Now, I'm going to use some different layers. This first layer is going to be the table. Now, on the table, I can also put on some pockets. So this is where I'm going to use what's called the oval primitive tool. And I want to make sure it's a black inside and probably black stroke. Now, the way these work is I'm going to do a quarter circle. So I want to have just this just be um, 90 degrees. So when I come over here, it's just going to give me a quarter circle of 90. I want to put that here. Now, size-wise, I think it might be better 45 by 45. I want to have four of these all together, so I'm going to duplicate it three more times. Control D is a very fast duplication. One, two, three. I'll bring one over here. Let me run over here. I'll bring one over here. Now, of course, I need to move this around, so I'm going to flip it so I can go. I can't do for tree free transform, but it seems to work better if I just go to modify, transform, flip. This one's going to go vertical. I'll use the arrows to get it close to the edge. I want to flip this one horizontally. Modify, transform, flip horizontal. This one I think I have to do both directions. Modify, transform, flip vertical. And I also have to flip horizontal. I got to use the arrows to bring it down. I'll use this to move it just to the left a little bit with my arrows. Now I need two more. I need my middle pocket, so I'll duplicate twice. Now these need to be 180 degrees. So what I'll do is just come over here and type in 180 in the end angle. And I'll come over here and do the same thing, change the 90 to 180. I can use the sliders, but when I know the exact amount, let me flip this one horizontal. Messed up. I must. I think I have to flip it vertically. Sorry about that. Now, if I want to have these spaced out evenly, I can select all of these, and we have the option of distributing these. Okay. Now, the way that is under Modify, Arrange, Align. I'm sorry. First, I want to align them all together. Then I'll say Modify, Arrange, Align, Distribute Widths. The same thing down here, but this time I'll um, align them to the bottom. Modify, align, bottom. Modify, align, distribute widths. Okay, good. I'll file, save as, or just save is fine. It goes to my flash folder. I'll call it pool table one. Okay. Now the next thing I need to do is create some balls. Now to do this, for sure, first of all, I'm going to make a new layer. Now I'm going to start with the real simple ones. So I'll use my traditional oval tool. And most of the time, we're going to let's stick with the transparent brush and I'm, I'm not going to get real sophisticated. I'm just going to do a few basic colors. So there is a, a red one. So on our opening project, we're only going to do simple balls. So that current size is 53. That's probably too big. I want to make them 40 by 40. OK, now I'm going to copy that Control C. And I'm going to go ahead and convert that to a symbol. Symbol 1, I'll just say red. 
So now there's my red ball. Layer two, I'll say red. I can make another layer, and I'm going to paste in the red one I had, change the color on that to, I'll say green for now, and I'll convert that to a symbol, and I'll type in green, and I'll change my layer name to green. I'll move that, I'll start putting them over here. Make another layer, and it still remembers the original red ball. I paste that in, change the color, I'll go with blue. I'll convert that to a symbol called blue. And my layer four name, I'll call it blue. And I'll move it over here. The red one, I'll go ahead and move that in that general direction as well. I'm gonna make a, a fairly simple one right now, which is just going to contain nine balls. So I'll make another layer, and I'll paste one in. I haven't really made a cue ball yet, so let's do a white and convert that to a symbol. It's Q. You can call it white if you prefer. All right, I want that to be just above the red, so it's e easy to find. All right, let's do another new layer. It still remembers the red one I originally copied. Now, I don't want to copy one that has a symbol because I can't change the colors very easily. So now I'm ready for yellow. Convert that to a symbol called yellow. And change the layer name to yellow. And move that over. I need to make three more. Paste, color, looks like I'm ready for light blue. Convert to symbol, light blue. Layer name, light blue. Move that into position. I think I can just do one more to keep a simple deal. So I'll paste in a color. I haven't done pink yet. I just use all the standards. Convert that to a symbol, pink. And layer name, pink. OK, now I'm ready to align these a little bit. Now I can highlight all of those and move them together need to be careful. They all have to be symbols. Notice they have that little plus sign. I'm going to grab those three, and I'll modify a line to the right. And I'll distribute with. I'm not sure if I need to or not. Sometimes it does a nice job of doing it automatically. Actually, this will be distributing heights. These two look pretty close together. I'll move them in. So here's the basic, we'll call this six ball, okay? Let me save it, so I haven't saved in a little while. So I go down to the table, and let's give it some space. Let's say I want this to be, this is what we call the trick shot problem. So if I go to 80, maybe 80 would be enough. Insert a frame, not a keyframe, just a frame. And then go back to the first frame. Now all of these balls here, I would like them to stay still for the first 10 frames. So I can actually come down here and everything except for the queue, I can insert a frame. Now the queue, I want to insert a keyframe because what it's going to do between 0 and 10, it's going to move and touch that first ball. And I will do a classic tween in there. Now, first touches the it touches the pink one first. Now, if you want to, you can reorder these if it helps. I see pink. I see light blue next. I see the red. Maybe the yellow one I see after the red. Actually, it looks like the yellow one I'd see after the light blue. And then red's in the back, green's in the back, blue's in the back. That would be fine. 
So let's move the pink one slightly. So let's go to maybe two or three over, insert a keyframe, and it looks like I messed up. I'm going to hit Control Z. I need to convert all these to keyframes so they stay still in that spot. I made a, a, an error. So the white one's going to hit the pink. The pink is going to make a keyframe here and move slightly. And if we want to, we could see how all of them look and make changes as we want to. We could Let's do that. Let's go ahead and go to 20 and put another set of keyframes in so we can see where things are going to move. So there's the pink. It's going to hit the blue after a couple things. It will be a quick little classic tween. OK. Now the blue, I'll put a, a quick little keyframe in the first section. And let's move it over. And that will be a keyframe here. And it's going to start to move towards the red one. And that will have a classic tween. Then the red one, in that same spot, insert a keyframe there. And then I kind of think the red one might be ending up in the pocket. So I'm going to go to that last part and put the red right here. Make a little classic tween there. And right on the next exact one, I'm going to insert a blank keyframe so it shows it's disappearing. So I'll move this back to the beginning. This is what I have so far. OK? All right. All right, so after we hit the red one, we could look at what happens in the yellow one. So if I look at yellow in this spot, it could be the pink one could move after it touches. Maybe it could then start towards the yellow one. So let's come over here, insert a keyframe, and move it towards the yellow one. Smaller moves are much better with the keyboard mouse. So there it's touching the yellow one. And I'll do a little bit of a classic tween in that spot. Then I go to yellow. Red, uh, pink was right here. Yellow. We need to put a keyframe right here where it first makes the first click. And then I'll go two away from there. And I'll insert a keyframe and have that touch the blue one. Make a little bit of a, I won't, since it's only one apart, I won't worry about a tween since it's only one frame. But let's put, use that line to the blue, make a keyframe there. And then decide, well, maybe on 20, blue can go also into the pocket. Uh, looks like I messed up slightly. I just need blue to go to the pocket right from here. And then I'll go next door to it and insert a blank keyframe. So what do we have so far? All right, so we patiently do each one. Now go back to where the next possible movement might have been. Maybe the yellow one will then hit the green one. So let's go to the yellow one, the last keyframe I had, and let's move it over one, insert a keyframe here, and then touch the green one. And now in that same spot, I'll go to green, Insert a keyframe here, because it was still up until then. Now this time, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to have the green one. It's already got a keyframe, so I don't need to insert one. I want the green one to touch the bank. And once it touches the bank, I made a mistake here. Sorry, I'll do a control C. I should have done a classic tween. Now let's go to maybe 30, and let's have the green one go all the way to the corner pocket here. Classic tween, 31, blank keyframe. 
and it disappears into the pocket on the blank keyframe. All right, so where were we? We might want to look and see what happens to the light blue one. So the pink one might be touching that. Where's the light? When pink was last talked about, the blue went right there. So the blue had a little bit of movement here and here. Now where's light blue? Here's light blue's last known position. So I think light blue needs to go on the side. Insert a keyframe. Oh, messed up. Key, blank key, uh, sorry, regular keyframe. And let's have it come on the side here. I'll use the arrow so it can touch the bank. That's not a very big movement, so it's going to be kind of fast. And then I'll come here. Oh, on this keyframe, I'm going to have to have the, it, it. I'll bring it over here to show some movement. And then I'll come to 26 or so on light blue. Insert a keyframe. Bounce it over here. Tween it. Come to maybe 37. Keyframe. Bounce it over here. Key, a classic tween. And let's go to 40. Keyframe. Go to the opposite corner. Tween. And do a blank keyframe to help it disappear. All right. So as you can see, we're kind of doing a whole bunch of things along that line. I'll stop right now. And because we're at 17 minutes, that's plenty of time. Thank you. Bye-bye.